The Golgotha of Academician Kravchuk. To the head of the Supreme Court of the USSR, Prosecutor General of the USSR, from the prisoner Mikhailo Filipovich Kravchuk, arrested on February 21st, 1938, by the NKVD in Kiev and sentenced to 20 years of imprisonment and the denial of political rights for five additional years by the field session of the military board of the Supreme Court of the USSR. Complaint. This is the third complaint I have filed. The previous two were sent in January and February of 1939, but I still haven't received a reply to either of them. I was born in 1892 in the village of Chubnitsya in Lutsky Povit, a Volinskaya province, to a land surveyor's family. In 1914, I graduated from Kiev University. In 1929, I became a full member of Ukraine's Academy of Sciences. After my arrest, I was accused of being a member of a Ukrainian bourgeois nationalistic organization. I was ordered to describe the evolution of my counter-revolutionary convictions, my professional criminal affairs, my counter-revolutionary propaganda amongst my students, formation of rebel troops, and my undercover work of espionage against the state. I was stunned by these absurd accusations, worn out by the nightly interrogations, especially for the 11 days of forced sleeplessness. I categorically deny any participation in some mythical nationalistic organization. The state of my health exempts me from any personal concerns in case of a retrial, but the ascertaining of the truth is in itself vital to the clearing of my name. Therefore, I am asking for a re-examination of my case. In the last version of his complaint, Mikhailo Kravchuk mentioned the date of August 16, 1940. His address in prison, Mahadan, mailbox 261-5. Mahadan, Poštova Skrinka, 261-35. It will be a long time coming until a reply arrives from the banks of the Dnieper to the faraway Kolyma, if it ever comes. During the brief intervals of the so-called free time, the memories of bygone days would haunt the prisoner of the gold mines in the frozen depths of Kolyma. The natural beauty of his native village of Chovnitsya, where he spent his precocious childhood, of Lutsk, where his parents moved so that their children could study in the gymnasia. His first achievements in studies, first rewards, graduation with a gold medal. He dreamt of studying at the University of St. Volodymyr in Kiev, which in fact he entered in the autumn of 1910. It was at the National University, upon the recommendation of Professor Boris Bukhreyev, that Kravchuk experienced the privilege of becoming a permanent participant of scientific seminars of the already prominent professor of mathematics, the Metro Grave. Grave quickly realized his new student's mathematical gifts. It was Professor Grave who said, in the foreseeable decade or two, 
manuals and scientific monographs will publish Mikhailo Kravchuk's theorems, grave predictions. In 1914, Mikhailo Kravchuk graduated from Kyiv University's Physics and Mathematics Department with a diploma of the highest grade. He became a professorial scholarship recipient, then a senior lecturer, and finally a university professor. The uncertainty of the civil war forced Mikhailo Kravchuk to leave Kiev and the university. He found shelter in the village of Savarka in Bohuslavshina, where he had spent his time as a student. Mikhailo used to travel to that region in search of part-time jobs. He mowed lawns, threshed wheat, repaired houses to help pay for his education. Here, everything had a deep meaning for Mikhailo. The Ross River's leisurely flow, the cherry orchards, the open fields, his native language, children's bright eyes, thirsty for knowledge, and the village people who at their own expense had built a school. For many years to come, that school would serve the children of the village, among whom were some outstanding talents. Mikhailo Filipovich, a demanding teacher, became the director of the school in Savarka. He knew how to inspire and develop their potentials. The legend of his academic passion remains to this day. Once the teachers of this newly created school in Taraska, Novatny, Bilenko, and Kalinyuk decided to spend some time together, recalls one of Kravchuk's students, Mikhailo Khomenko. Mr. Homenko, the candidate on physics and mathematics, continues. But he said, I can't, I have to go and get ready to my classes. They, indeed, you have been teaching almost four years, and you are still going to get ready. And he says, you see, some people from Savarka, that village, come and ask me such questions that sometimes I cannot answer. Later, it was found out that those were pupils of the school where Mikhailo Pilipovich Kravchuk was the headmaster and the teacher of mathematics and astronomy. Archip Lulka owed his career to his first teacher. This curious, knowledge-thirsty boy later became Kravchuk's student in the Kiev Polytechnic University. And the professor always supported his student. Lulka became the top designer of airplane engines. He owns the priority on the turboprop engines. Soviet turboprop aviation owes its success to the academician Archip Lulka, Kravchuk's one-time student. Kravchuk continued his scientific research in Savarka, researching quadratic formulas and linear transformations. He discovered an unusual and original method that allowed him to define their new properties. Kravchuk generalized the theorems of the famous German mathematicians Warstrauss, Jacobi, Kronecker, Frobenius, the Frenchman Eremit, Darbeau, as well as the Englishman Sylvester. It was also in Savarka that fortune again brought Kravchuk together with his good friend, the poet Dmitro Zagul, who had been working there as a teacher at that time. Kravchuk's wife, Esfirio Sepivna, the mother of his son Erhen, 
and daughter Natalia had also been working at that school. At the same time, in their letters, Grave, Bukreyev, Akademishin, Achtangel, Krimsky, and his blood brother, Mikola Zerov, unanimously insisted on Kravchuk's return to the higher education of Kiev. And it was a cold and hungry January of 1921 that Kravchuk returned to Kiev. Professor Grave was impressed by the creative achievements of yesterday's professorial scholarship recipient. The mathematic calculations that Krauchuk gave to the academician Grave before leaving Kiev resulted in a monograph on the quadratic forms and linear transformations, a new proof of the basic theorem of algebra and the basic theorem of the German mathematician Minkowski on the linear forms the original research in the general theory of bilinear forms and in the theory of the curves of the fourth power. Upon his return to Kyiv, Krauchuk began to work in the Kyiv Polytechnic University. Here, Arkhip Lulka, as well as Sergei Koroloyev from Odessa, joined the ranks of his students. In time, Koroloyev would become the creator of space systems, an academician, and the hero of labor. In the 1920s, Kravchuk was fully engaged in the creative work, organization of the academic process, both in the Kiev Polytechnic University and at the Department of Professional Education of the Higher Institution of People's Education, later Kiev State University. One by one, the scientific works by Professor Kravchuk were published. They enriched the theory of algebraic equations and analytic functions, the theory of effective variable and interpolation, differential and integral equations, mathematical statistics, different kinds of analysis. Brilliant mathematician and pedagogue, Kravchuk was invited to work at Ukraine's National Academy of Sciences, as well as other prominent educational institutions of Kyiv. Scientists from France, Italy, Germany, and the USA were greatly interested in his works. He received enticing job proposals from abroad, where the most favorable conditions for creative work were offered to him. However, the heart of the scientist was deeply rooted in his Ukraine and had bled for Ukraine from the time of the Tsar and after his fall. Mikhailo Pilipovich couldn't afford to limit his scientific activity only to his own achievements. The scientific seminar was growing, and new fresh scientific forces joined in. Along with Lulka and Koroloyev, Alexander Smorzhevsky, Vladimir Mojar, Ivan Shemansky, Valentin Smorovich, and many others were enthusiastically searching for their own way in the field of science. The professor generously, generously shared his ideas and initiated research work with his students. Mikola Khomenko speaks. He knew a lot of foreign languages, and because of this he was up to the mark in many fields of mathematics. There was such a well-known German mathematician Gauss, who put the problem for himself to solve, and solved a part of it, a very small one. Kravchuk got to know about it and proposed a very talented scientist Rybakov, who then worked at the Chair of Geometry, to develop this subject matter. Very soon, only a year later, he maintained a thesis on topology. That was the first thesis on topology in Ukraine.
Це була перша дисертація патопології на Україні. Scientific interests united Kravchuk also with mathematicians from Lviv who were considered foreigners at this time. Professors Volodymyr Levitsky, Miron Zaretsky, and Mikola Tchaikovsky. In 1928, Mikhailo Kravchuk goes to Italy and gives several impressive speeches at the International Congress of Mathematicians. The same year, he established scientific and friendly relationships with such outstanding mathematicians as Gilbert, Alamarad, Courant, Tricomi, and Levi Civita. On the 29th of June, 1929, Mikhailo Filipovich was elected as a full member of the National Ukraine's Academy of Sciences. At the same meeting, he was approved to the position of an academic secretary of the UAS's Presidium. The newspaper Proleterskaya Pravda published an article by the academician Grave. It said, the history of the World Academies has some examples of a successful choice of a young scientist. For instance, the great Laplace joined the Paris Academy when he was quite young, without having uh, prodigious uh, personal scientific works. However, after becoming a member of the Academy, he became the creator of celestial mechanics. Therefore, I propose the public organizations to pay special attention to the candidacy of the Doctor of Mathematics, Professor Mikhailo Kravchuk. The ensuing eight years were the most productive in Mikhailo Kravchuk's scientific life. He received a number of fundamental results in the theory of integral equations, the theory of probability, and the theory of mathematical statistics. He published several textbooks of higher education. Mikhailo Zelizniak, retired colonel engineer, speaks. Mikhailo Pelipovich Kravchuk, the world known mathematician, lectured to us, and I was lucky to attend his lectures. This man radiated some beneficial, generous spirit inspiring us, his students. Mikola Humenko, candidate on physics and mathematics, speaks. He spoke Ukrainian perfectly. At that time, almost all professors delivered lectures in Ukrainian. However, his Ukrainian was so brilliant that even students from the philological department attended his lectures, and sometimes even professors came with them. Mikhailo Kabalsky, the candidate on engineering, speaks. His lectures were like a son in mathematics. He never followed manuals literally. He rather presented his point of view on the theorems we had to study according to the academic program. One autumn morning in 1937, like a lightning bolt out of the blue, a statement in the communist newspaper in black and white had written, Academician Kravchuk praises the enemies of the state. This year, in September, informed the article, the magazine Progress in Mathematics, issue number three, was published. It contained the article by the academician Kravchuk, 
that caused a surge of anger among all honest-minded Soviet mathematicians. In his article, the author, with a passion worthy of higher application, extols the bitterest people's enemies denounced by the NKVD long ago. In addition, Kravchuk constantly maintained close contact with these people's enemies, because he, together with these miserable fascist traitors, is a co-author of several books. The article was signed by the Honorable Academician Grave, Director of the Institute of Mathematics of the National Ukraine's Academy of Sciences, and the Academic Secretary Breus. In early October, a session of the Academy of Sciences took place. Among the issues at the session was the academician Kravchuk in connection with the article in the communist newspaper was brought up. Mikhailo Pilipovich was accused of being connected with the bourgeoisie of Poland long before being elected the academician and of being in constant correspondence with the mathematicians from Lviv, Tchaikovsky and Levitsky. The following fact was especially emphasized. In 1930, Kravchuk was entrusted to speak as a public accuser at the legal proceedings of the so-called Liberation Union of Ukraine. He refused to do so, referring to his illness. Public persecution of the academician took place at the Kyiv State University and the Kyiv Polytechnic University, where the speakers, boiling with anger and envy against Kravchuk, were easily found. Among those who had enough civil courage not to shame the scientists were Professor Yuri Sokolov, senior lecturers Alexander Smorzhevsky, Valentin Zmorovich, and the student Pavlo Bondarenko. Later, Smorzhevsky will write in his memoirs about his teacher. They threw mud at this remarkably talented and honest man who was in the prime of his life. They destroyed him. Shame on the enemies of Mikhailo Bilipovich. Those who saw him as a dangerous competitor Shame on those who slandered him with their lives. Mikhailo Kravchuk was arrested on February 21st of 1938. The trial took place on the 23rd of September of the same year. It lasted half an hour. The military panel of judges of the Supreme Court of the USSR found Kravchuk guilty of participation in an anti-Soviet Ukrainian nationalistic organization and sentenced him to 20 years of imprisonment and five more years of the deprival of his political rights. However, the Ukrainian scientists' fate had been decided even before the court was held, on the 12th of September, and not in Kyiv, but in the starry Kremlin by the triumvirate court of the final instance, Stalin, Molotov, Zhdanov. They were those who signed the list of people sentenced to be shot or imprisoned for a life term. In that list, Kravchuk was the second one. From the special block of the Lutyanivska prison, the prisoner having a personnel file number 11954 with the inscription on the title page, a nationalist was escorted to the Nova Cherkaskaya prison and from there through the Vladivostok to Kolyma and Istanbul, Jurma. Since that time, Mikhailo Kravchuk, the personal number 238943, experienced the most barbaric of Stalin's concentration camps, Bereloch, 
Odiak, Valley of Death. The brutal drudgery at the ice-cold mines caused scurvy wounds on his hands, legs, and body. Already undermined his heavy heart. There was a brief period of respite from the work in the mines. Sevostok Klag just started the construction of a local railway. Engineering calculations were required immediately. They called upon Kravchuk. He was given civilian clothes, a normal food ration, and a warm workplace. Hardly had three weeks passed, and Kravchuk made an engineering decision that the building of that railway was senseless. The authorities understood it in their own way. The people's enemy brings harm to the state, even out here. And Kravchuk was thrown back to the camp again. But you could have prolonged your work on calculations at least for half a year. The other prisoners reproached him. No, I could not. Those days I felt like a human being, answered Kravchuk. Mikola Popov, the former political prisoner, speaks. I first met Kravchuk in a gold mine named Maldyak. Being an academician of the Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, he used to come after work and sit down at a small iron stove and solve mathematical problems. He handed in all his calculations to the camp authorities. Every morning in the camp a senior man of the barracks woke people and everyone had to jump off their plank beds. Once Kravchuk didn't jump off his bed. The senior came up to him and began to beat him with a club. But Kravchuk never stirred. He was dead. On March 9, 1942, Mikhailo Pilipovich Kravchuk passed away. All that remained were certificates of his death and burial, testifying that the deceased is buried at the depth of one and a half meters, which is hit to the west. That's all. His one consolation was that he was buried with his head to the west, to the west, to his dear heart, Ukraine. That was the only award to the Ukrainian mathematician from the Soviet government. However, the scientist managed to finish his investigations, his researches he had been working on for the past 20 years. He gave the manuscript to the camp officials. However, unfortunately, the manuscript has still not been found. Kravchuk's brothers in arms, poets Mikola Zerov and Metro Zahul, were accused of nationalism, arrested and shot in 1937. The former in Sandermoch, Karelia, the latter in Kolyma. In 1956, Mikhailo Kravchuk's wife will receive a notification from the highest collegiums of the Supreme Court that the sentence on her husband's case is cancelled because of the absence of the corpus delicti, evidence. 36 years later, in 1992, Kravchuk will be reinstated in the membership of the true members of Ukraine's Academy of Sciences. But the world knew about the great martyr of science. World mathematicians couldn't exist without Kravchuk's moments, Kravchuk's oscillators, Kravchuk's multinominals. In different countries, the investigations developing the mathematical ideas of Mikhailo Pilipovich were published. Kravchuk was at the conception of the first electronic computer. Ivan Kachanovsky, philosophy doctor, speaks. I happen to find a record that the translation of Mikhail Kravchuk's manuscript is kept in the library of the state of Iowa. Atanasov, who invented the computer, wrote in 1937 that Kravchuk's works were very useful for his inventing the computer. As Evgen Seneta, a mathematician from remote Australia, said, the world knew of his works, it only didn't know that he was Ukrainian. 
Unfortunately, in his own homeland, Ukraine, he is known only amongst the professionals who got to know him through his scientific achievements, his research. It has not yet been determined how many scientific works he has produced. Almost everything was withdrawn from the libraries and destroyed in Ukraine. However, when a selected volume of works and mathematics of his were published in 2002, they became a priceless volume immediately. Now, books are written about the brilliant mathematician and pedagogue. Schools are named after him. The buildings where he lived and studied are marked with memorial plaques now. A museum is founded in the village of Chovnitsya at Volin, where he was born. At the National Polytechnic University, KPI, 10 international conferences specifically dedicated to the memory of the scientists were held. The scientific collection of articles of the academician from different countries titled Development of Mathematical Ideas of Mikhail Kravchuk was published. At the KPI, the auditorium was named after Kravchuk, and the monument was erected for him. Ukraine lost its faithful son, who could have created many more prominent scientific inventions to the altar of its magnificence. Concerning this, Ivan Drach writes, the people struggled to live. The people could reach for the sun. The people carried the state of the science on their backs. The people were breaking the rocks with their picks. The people were burning to not let the day die. To not let the day die. Thank you. 